Hi, and welcome to another edition of Hanging with Cornellians. Uh, my guest this week is Gabe Corridor. Gabe, Gabe graduated in 2005 from AIM. Um, welcome, Gabe. Thank you. Uh, if, would you mind giving a brief background about yourself just before we get started? Sure. Uh, so as you said, yeah, I graduated from the AIM program in 2005, then went on to work a combined uh, six years uh, between Lehman Brothers and Barclays in the uh, fixed income and investment banking decisions. Uh, divisions, excuse me, um, advising insurance companies around a number of different uh, strategic financial transactions. Uh, I left in April of 2011 and founded a third-party logistics company with a partner in July of 2011, uh, servicing importers and exporters from around the world. Subsequently, sold my interest uh, to my party uh, to my partner a year later, and in October of last year, founded. Artisano.com. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit more about what you're doing with Artisano? Uh, where the idea came from? What what it is? Um, maybe some some of what of the challenges? What are the challenges have been? Um, love to hear about it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so with Artisano.com, what we're trying to build is a curated marketplace of affordable luxury fashion products from around the world to a fashion customer within the US to start. So we focus on unique designs, high quality, under the radar or emerging brands that essentially need a marketing and distribution channel outside of their local target market. Uh, our customer is late 20s to late 40s, higher than average household income, shops in specialty boutique stores, less so in department stores, is a fashion savvy customer and is looking for unique products to fill their wardrobe. Uh, the idea, frankly, came from some experience, the experience that I had in the logistics company, as well as just loving to travel and finding products uh, across the world that we couldn't get back here that were still you know, fashion forward and, and high quality. Um, and from speaking to, to designers all over the world and understanding that they need a technology and operations platform beyond what's currently available to market and distribute their products. Awesome. So, <clears throat> yeah, well, I guess sorry, I was just going to add, you know, the challenges, you know, there's a, there's a long list of challenges. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, I think coming up learning curves very quickly is is a challenge and something that you have to become reasonably good at. Um, I, I think manage putting together a team uh, that has the right expertise at this stage that can take on a lot of different tasks. It can be everyone can be a generalist. I think is also a challenge. And I think um, you know the overall challenge is uh, you know you're dealt a certain uh, hand of cards and playing them as best as you can and, and working with the limited resources that you have as as an aspiring entrepreneur. Awesome, and you're based out of New York City, correct? We are. Yep. And how I guess how do you think that's played in? Do you think that's been an advantage? How do you like starting a company in New York City, say, versus Silicon Valley or somewhere like Boston? Sure, uh, you know there's uh, I, there, there's an every day there's an increasing amount of resources available in New York from you know human resource talent and other areas. So I think um, you know in particular given our industry, New York is a really good spot to be. Um, we have proximity to brands, proximity to talent, uh, but the other um, you know key geography has, uh, for us has been Cornell. So. We've been really conscious to uh, look to Cornell, particularly with the the amazing amount of uh, you know information and resources that there are dedicated to entrepreneurship in general. Right. Um, you know, we've been able to recruit students. We've been able to get uh, advisors this way. Um, so I think you know New York City has been a great place to to try to build a business, but certainly you know bringing it back to Cornell and staying. Uh, in touch with 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 the community in Ithaca uh, has been has been key for us. Cool, cool, yeah. And then uh, good segue to Cornell. Then just one last question: um, What do you think? What, if you had to pick one thing, what do you miss most about being up at Cornell? You know, uh, miss a lot of things. Probably, uh, and, I, and I was just up in Ithaca, and I and I and I, I feel it every single time. It's the the you know the intellectual environment 
right, of the of the of academia that you know you you feel at Cornell and it's just rampant throughout campus and off campus. It's it's really amazing. It's where um, you know I you know I just think it just both the setting, um, but also the student body and the faculty and all the all the other sort of uh, members of the Cornell community really um, create an environment that um, uh, you know promotes more than just learning, but um, you know really um, I think just places an esteem on on, on effort and um, it's just it's just inspiring. I think even just as a graduate walking through campus. Uh, to feel that that energy and and sort of just attitude towards learning. Great, great. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for joining us and for uh, willing to be interviewed. Um, and thanks to everybody for watching. Yeah. Thank you. Ian. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs>